Good evening, everyone. My name is Tracy Pun, and this is my father and my teammate, David Whitcomberg. We are doing our presentation tonight on our research and development of the adjustable free flight glider model for novice gliders. Our teammate, Ryan Whitcomberg, who has done the research, is unable to be with us tonight, so we'll be conferencing him in on the phone. He, Ryan is an avid, avid um, RC pilot who has attended one international AMA sanctioned event. He's also attended the 2010 World Space Modeling Championships for SAEP and many national sailplane contests. I'm a beginner RC flyer and will present this presentation as such. In preparing for this presentation, I was able to quickly and easily understand the way the model works. Ryan has designed this model to use limited control for an in inexperienced flyer. We developed our prototype on Bob Park's Hummingbird design that uses adjustable flaps on the wings. This was published in the July and August of 1993 High Power Rocketry magazine. We also had some ideas and suggestions from Paul Gravenal. We have named our prototype the Woodstar. Our teammate designed the glider in a way that any novice RC flyer can fly this glider. The model requires little input from the pilot and is an affordable RC type plane option for beginners. This model was built to fly on both B and C motors. The model itself was built with a hollow boom box and solid hinged balsa wings with the balsa tail. The glider also includes pop pod hooks from George Gasway and music wire to control the flaps on the wings. The pod consists of BT-20 tubing, a BT-20 nose cone, and spruce boom. Inside the glider is a two-channel vapor brick and a single cell LiPo battery. The Woodstar was developed with flaps on the wings that allow a different amount of wing chamber from boost to glide. This also allows us to incorporate some roll-on boost to keep the glider straight during boost. I'm going to begin to describe the basic receiver adjustments and how they affect the glider. When you're boosting the glider, the left three-way position switch should be down and the left switch which is normally used for a throttle control on power planes is up. The stick is not spring loaded to return to center position and stays where you leave it. This mode causes the flap on the glider to be up, one of the flaps on the glider to be up a bit and the other to be level with the wing. The, the wing with the flap slightly up causes the roll on boost. There is also a safety feature on the boost mode that disables the dethermalizing functionality. Once the pod comes off, you move the three-way position from the glide setting to the left, to the from the glide setting to the middle to the middle, and you use the left the left stick stays in the forward or up position. Both flaps are down to three degrees slightly, making glider and one flap flap is also slightly down, making the glider do a slight turn on flight. At this point, no input from the pilot is needed for the glider to glide on its own. The glider is designed so that if you need to bring the model down due to having enough time for the flight or getting into a thermal that you really need to get out of or otherwise getting too far out of control, you can switch to the, to the dethermalizing boat. And the, in the dethermalizing mode, the left three position switch is in the up position, and the left control stick can be moved down to give a variable control of spiral dive. One flap on the glider is level with the wing, and the other flap goes down. You can control the speed of the landing by how far down you bring the left stick to allow you to quickly get out of the thermal or create a soft landing. 
Once a pilot has become a bit more experienced, they can easily control the direction of glide path with the right stick. If you move the right stick to the right, the left flap goes down and the right flap goes up. This causes a downward push of air under the left wing, making the glider turn right. If you move the right stick to the left, the opposite occurs. In order to control the pitch of the nose, you can move the right stick up and down. Pulling the right stick on, pulling the, right stick on the receiver back causes the nose of the glider to go up and the flaps of the wings to go down. Pushing the right stick on the receiver forward causes the nose of the glider to go down and the flaps to go up a bit. This basic knowledge, as you can see, will allow even a beginner flyer myself, as, or David, to fly this model. Our teammate David learned to fly RC for the first time with this model and had a great flight at NARAM. David was able to fly this model on his own at NARAM without Ryan's input. Initial tests by Ryan and David were done by hand launching the glider. This allowed us to tweak the flap on adjustments. This, this also allowed David to practice switching from boost mode to glide mode and finally to the, to the dethermalizing mode. Some hand thrown throws were purposely done so that the glider would stall and David could practice recovering it. This allowed us to tweak even more and we realized from some fine tuning that we had to actually achieve what we were looking for. Once he had the basic movements down, we made boost with an engine. This allowed us to tweak even more, and we realized from some, also some fine tuning adjustments that the motor positioning needed to be changed just slightly. After a few adjustments and some push rod binding trial and error, the glider flew very nicely. In conclusion, we feel this project was a huge success. Obviously, David was able to fly it at NARAM by himself. We were also able to create a model that can be flown by the beginner pilot and can still be competitive in NARAM boost glide events. This glider can also be modified to fly various engine classes. The glider was relatively inexpensive to make, which allows for a novice flyer to, per to build one without making a huge investment. We also feel this is an area of model rocketry that we can improve on and hope to continue to put more effort and improvements into the future.
RC where you have to do very little adjusting. Um, I'm wondering if the opposite approach might be better for beginners, something where you, you know, were terrible at trimming your glider, but you can compensate with your RC skills by you know, to make it fly better or get yourself out of the problem. And that is definitely an option, or definitely true. I mean, once we kind of had worked out a little kinks out of this, obviously the plants were compensated to allow for the, the things we had found in testing, but um, I honestly feel that with some minor, minor hand tossing that a novice pilot would be able to do this based upon the plans. Oh, hold on, Ryan's adding. Transmitter control. Transmitter programming. Um, and 